Okay, it's uh, Friday, July the 5th, 2019, and I'm down um, in Nebworth. This is a local walk for me, just 10 minutes from where I live on the train, although typically today it took nearly 30 minutes due to a points failure. However, we're about to undertake 13 miles to Welling Garden, uh, which is a very familiar walk to me, lots of this terrain I already know, uh, particularly as we recently filmed SWC 69 a couple of years ago, well it's not that recent, uh, Welling Garden City Circular. Mixed day today, it's humid, overcast, not ideal walking conditions but uh, nonetheless it's not raining, that's the main thing. got the former station pub opposite. There is a campaign afoot at the moment to save that uh, pub. Uh, a developer doesn't want to sell. He did want to convert it into flats like those being built alongside me here. So watch that space with the station pub. Crossing over the busy A1M Passing Lodge Farm on my right with its interesting pub type sign there. Entering Old Nebworth. Homewood just on my left there. Okay, this is supposed to be the signposted turn into the right, but I don't see any signpost here. So it's gone missing since the text was written up by the looks of it. GPS says I'm on the right track but uh, no signage. That was exactly one mile of walking, uh, road walking, from the station to this point. So we're now getting off the roads uh, into the countryside. Got a wreck here on the right if this is the right route. Which I believe it is. Private no uh, entrance there. Headed towards Cow Pasture Wood. Nice name. Now as you can see it's that time of year, early July, when the brambles start going mad. So the old uh, secateurs are in my bag as required. Thankfully not just yet. Thankfully today, the cow pasture is occupied by horses and beyond cow pasture we've got the uh, towers of Stevenage looming in the distance. Stevenage New Town of course the country's first. Got it all going on up here. Stevenage New Town, Letchworth Garden City, Welling Garden City. That's why there's no space in Hertfordshire for the residents. No water either. Clear sign of ash die back here on this ash. Absolutely decimating our trees. And all because uh, someone brought in a tree that they shouldn't have done. One of these uh, garden centres I suppose. Imported a load of stock and here we are. Our ashes are suffering. This is cow pasture wood on the left. That's the um, premises of Glaxo Smith Klein over there ahead of us on the very southern edge of Stevenage. And as you can see here in front of me, this wheat turning colour but still a long way to go. Unlike the barley which I reckon will be cut very soon. The A1M, just about audible at this point. Now that's interesting, I've never seen that before. Grey squirrels eating these wheat heads. 
didn't realise that they uh, liked it, but clearly they do. So where a wheat field borders woodland, as this one clearly does, squirrels will come out and eat the uh, wheat, which is literally feet away from them. Some tiny little uh, pinky red flowers here, kind of which I haven't seen before. I wonder if anyone can identify them. Can't properly get them into focus. Anyway, we're in this bit of rough meadow, oats in the distance with this kind of rough wildflower border which is great to see, it's full of butterflies there you go, the megalith that is uh, Smith Klein Glaxo now entering the grounds of Nebworth House Soon to have one of its musical festivals on. I think this year's one is dedicated to uh, the early 2000s. The lodge let by my mate Gino. A company I helped uh, establish with him in the early days, back in the mid 80s. shot there of the house information panel there about the opening times and what have you better view of the house there St Mary's Church, Nebworth, which as you can see is kept locked. There's been a number of uh, lead thefts in the area over recent years. Wonder who's doing that. Hmm. Apparently the full title is St Mary and Thomas of Canterbury, which is interesting. I wonder what the connection with uh, Canterbury is. We're normally Diocese of St Albans up here. Anyway, one for Google. Or possibly the notes at the end of this walk. Can't remember if there are any actually, seeing as I'm using pretty much the GPS. Leaving the church behind us and all kinds of uh, indications of the forthcoming Britpop festival not quite sure where that's actually held as I've never been to a festival here despite uh, many large bands being here in the mid 70s when I was a youth passing Nebworth Barnes Conference Centre amongst others that is the garden terrace tea rooms for those that want an early cuppa tea rooms open at 11 for those that are interested close at 5 pretty decent grounds it's actually uh, not bad walking weather right now. There's a, there's a nice chill breeze uh, keeping things cool. Lovely. Reach a footpath sign. Take a right here diagonally across the Graffage Wood over there in the distance. Well way marked. As with uh, last week's walk down in um, or near Basingstoke, plenty of butterflies around, marbled whites amongst them, 
and that lovely brown butterfly that seems to be very abundant at the moment totally brown walking through Gatridge Woods some kind of big campsite over there on my right okay you reach across paths by this footpath marker and as indicated on that take the path to the right which is also Stevenage's outer orbital path known as the stoop very pleasant mixed woodland uh, path this Scots pine, birch larch I think and so forth come out at this lane where we take a right very decent bit of woodland walking that was half a mile's worth fifty K fine for fly tipping doesn't deter them though very interesting here because uh, Harts County Council have retained the verges which is odd because they don't do that up my way so it must be down to each civic or sorry each uh, civil oh, what's the word parish sorry that's the word I'm looking for must be down to each parish council so this is where we turn off next to this cottage and as you may be able to hear in the background now we're now entering the flight path zone to Luton Airport so as mentioned earlier barley on my right it's a lot nearer fruition than the wheat won't be long before this is coming down and on my left whole lays wood on the map stroke GPS a lot of the uh, trees in this wood on my left are beech and I read another interesting article in the week whereby and as evidenced here over time beech leaves will saturate the woodland floor thus preventing anything else growing in there a bit like pines make it dark so nothing else grows beech leaves smother the woodland floor and uh, little other or very few other trees can tolerate that so hence you tend to just find beech woods on their own if you think about it when you're out walking in the Chilterns that is often the case got the odd oak here uh, on the edge but generally speaking it's beech great to see another field of oats as mentioned last week it's becoming increasingly popular very healthy crop as well now coming out into three houses lane where we turn right and walk downhill so just before three houses farmhouse there's a footpath marker on the left which we follow next to this belt of trees quite high tech paddocks here on my right new anyway solar panel power no horses in them at the minute though as the path continues across this field of barley you can see how very close this is to uh, cutting literally days away at this rate if this sun keeps up thought it might have been done by now earlier in the month but uh, I was wrong once again by contrast across this semi-green 
wheat field. Got some lovely colours in the woodland over there. Copper beech, look at it. Wonderful. That lovely dip as well in the landscape. Kites mewing in the background. Or sorry, probably more likely buzzards. And as you can see in the distance, possibly. Where is it? Got a jet coming into Luton. Easy jet. Don't know if I've got it because I haven't got my glasses on. Anyway. And now we cross another oak crop. Brilliant. Looking back from whence I've walked, as yet another jet pulls into uh, Luton. Lovely. I must admit, thus far, this walking's all new to me. Love it. Entering the village of Codicut, which was granted a market in 1279 there, as you can see. I didn't know that. More development, this time on the edge of Codicut. When will it cease? You've got to be careful here because uh, the odd little notes that there are indicate that you continue straight on into the village there, but you don't. Having come off of the uh, field path, you do a right here into Whitwell Road, down here, which is quite a busy road by the way, and I've just come from over there. The GPS of course has it right no problems if you're following that. So this is where the road splits and we now enter the grove which is referred to in the notes uh, when it should in fact be Whitwell Road earlier. The road is quite busy as I say the little footpath referred to in the comments on the left hand side of the road isn't for the duration of the whole of Whitwell Road though only for a small bit of it which I'm on at the moment. This little map here shows the permissive path link. Almost immediately you come off the grove, follow this footpath towards Kimpton Mill. On your right, up the bank, across Codicut Heath. Luckily the cattle are in the field next to the one I'm walking across. Must be pretty hot for them today. Unlike pigs, they don't get little sheds to sit in. Now entering more mixed woodland, following the path to Kimpton Mill. Now on the Hertfordshire Way, amongst others at this junction. Walking along a very pleasant and cooling tree tunnel. I guess this river is what ultimately becomes the River Lee, known up here as the Lee and in some quarters the Mimram I think it is. That must be the old mill over there. Kimpton Mill. Soon find out. So I'm stood outside the mill and opposite, slightly right from where I came out, is our onward journey up that uh, 
lying there towards Abbot's Hay. Views back over Kimpton. Some of my old schoolmates used to come from here on the bus. Lovely marbled whites. Lovely colours. Enjoying that, uh, is it napweed? No, I think it's thistle actually. As I walk up yet another tree tunnel, got some pretty decent views on the right. This is probably the high point, physically, of the walk thus far. Okay, I've just come from that direction. Kimpton Mill on the finger post. If you turn left in front of this big hedge, tall hedge, that's the most direct route to the recommended lunchtime pub stop, the Brocket Arms, which uh, didn't get a very good review when the club did the walk the other day. The entrance to Abbott's Hay And my onward journey is going to be down this lane towards the uh, redundant chapel. Okay, forget what I just said because I've now read the comments again, and that is the more direct route to the Brocket Arms at this three, well, two actually, signed finger post in front of this gate marked private. My journey is right, however at the end of this laurel bush I want to have my lunch uh, in this old redundant chapel if I can find it so there is the modern Palladian church in the distance just as well as I'm starving I'll pass two or thereabouts now Church of St. Lawrence. So there you go. Interesting uh, place. Wonderful roof. The old organ. Interest in the uh, holy man, however he's referred to here, speaks from a side position. So you've got people sitting to his side, and in front of him, amazing. A memorial to Major Crawley, who died in the Great War. God in my right. The 
then on the other side, non CB. Can't remember what that means. There are two benches outside the front door there with that uh, Latin inscription on it. So I shall take one of these out of the sun and in the cool. Rector, okay. Reverend Bonnie Evans Hills. Yeah, so this bench is in uh, memory of the Bambas. So I thank them. And uh, I've even got a table. My oh, goodness, luxury. Okay, it's about quarter past, no, it's 20 past three now. Lunch has been had. Very pleasant uh, it was, view as well, look. I noticed while having it that the um, meadow here, where all the headstones are, has been left. And I could hear either crickets or grasshoppers, probably the latter, since I now read that field crickets are pretty much confined to the South Downs. But um, in any case, there's something in this long grass with all the butterflies as well. Wonderful. No sheep today though, as mentioned in the text. Sometimes friendly sheep join you for lunch if you stop here. Quite an interesting building that one. So there you have the opening hours. Okay, this is an interesting addition. Shaw's Corner. Which I note has um, a little National Trust coffee bar here. That's interesting. Open Wednesdays to Sundays, bank holidays, 1 to 4.30. Being here <coughs> also means I'm off track because I've missed the redundant church. So I'm going to have to go and try and find that. See, there's a Palladian church. Somehow I've missed this footpath leading to it. This is the old church at A at St Lawrence, which I've filmed before on the Welling Garden City Circular. And I had lunch here as well, I think, on these uh, seats just outside the gate. There's the Brocket Arms, the recommended lunchtime stop. As you can see, this weekend is the Ayat Horticultural Summer Show on the green, one till dusk. So there we are, back at Shaw's Corner, familiar, uh, familiarising myself with uh, what used to be, or the old walk. So the terrain previous to now was all new. I think hereafter, we're back on the familiar territory with SWC 69, the Welling Circular. I believe this to be the correct footpath, but it's not marked Stocking Springs, as referred to in the text. But I'm going to give it a go for a few metres and see what the GPS shows me, because the GPS is showing this path as well. So it must be right. Yep, this will appear to be the right path. Very pleasant section of tree tunnel that I'm walking through at the moment. Protection from the overhead sun. Wonderful. Very quiet though, as is in keeping with this time of year. Very little bird song, because they're molting at the moment. 
possibly uh, lots of ransom in this wood at the appropriate time of year. Decent views out on the right. Not bad for Hertfordshire. You can see we are passing Stocking Springs Wood, Arts and Middlesex uh, Wildlife Trust, but that's not the um, directions on the finger post. Blue tit's got wind of me. So there you can see the uh, nature reserve here is traditional coppiced hornbeam woodland which appears to have a similar effect to beech. They are similar trees. The, uh, can the uh, ground level is devoid of uh, a lot of wildlife, um, other vegetation. Just crossed Codicote Road, quite busy. It's on a bend, so be careful. And uh, first thing I encounter is this dumped floorboarding which I've reported via Pathwatch, the excellent app that I often refer to. Do get it, it works. Okay, now following this footpath marker to Water End Lane, next to uh, Dowdell's Wood on my left apparently. Now heading up towards Three Groves Wood, leaving Dowdells there behind me. Yep, more barley nearly cooked. Some decent views over there on my right. As we continue to follow this uh, track in open countryside getting a bit cloudier now once again a bit hazier still very warm though but with this lovely cooling breeze thank god for that whence I've come crossing over the uh, greenway which is clearly a railway line I think it used to run between uh, Wheat Hampstead and St Margaret's Something like that anyway. But uh, as I continue to say about these old lines, nice walking trails, cycling trails they make, but wouldn't they be much better as railway lines? Stuff HS2, get all these old lines back in shape. So as you can see, the path I've been walking on is occasionally used for uh, 10k runs, amongst others. Thankfully that one's passed, but uh, do look out for it. Passing farm buildings on my left. Onward journeys ahead. Looks like this was a decent poppy field a few weeks ago. I saw someone refer to it in the walk notes when they walked the walk just two weeks ago, but uh, the poppies are on the wane now. So, uh, to quote the song, the poppies are not in the fields. Teardrop explodes, I believe that was. There is, however, a wonderful spread of what appears to be clover gone wild. Fantastic for wildlife. Absolute haven. Well done this farmer. Little monk jack sniffing around in that garden over there. As we now know. Possibly responsible for the demise of the nightingale. Pretty much eat anything them little critters. They need uh, culling. Sorry, but they do. It's the way of the world. 
So I've just left the Lee Valley Walk, coming into uh, Water End Lane, opposite this beautiful Gothic looking house. Wonderful. Water End House it is. And as you can see it's open for charity at the end of September. Very good. Bet that's worth a gander. Yep. So this is now very familiar terrain. SWC 69. The uh, Welling Garden Circular. Next to the river, Mimran, or Lee, as it's more commonly known as, I believe. See how low it is, it's not even fording anymore. Okay, now emerging from woodland, leaving the river behind us, into the grounds of Brockett Hall. Brockett Hall estate map there. Onward path is clear. There is the uh, house over there with its lake just visible through the trees. But what is noticeable today, very different to when I did the Welling Walk, is that the golf course is pretty much empty. Uh, it would have been a midweek day, Monday probably, when I walked the Welling Circular and it, uh, at that time I can't remember when it was, six years back. The course was full of Asians, Orientals, Japanese I believe. But some things happened in the intervening period. Can't remember what it was. Something to do with uh, Brockett coming out of jail, house being um, taken over by somebody else, etc, etc. Long story I guess. But no, no one playing the golf course today hardly. Parting shot of Brockett Hall. So at this finger post on the edge of the golf course, we do a sharp left here, following this line of, uh, I think it's sycamores, or trees anyway, towards that other finger post, clearly in the distance. I remember getting confused at this section when I did the well in circular. Anyway, easier this way. Five o'clock. Looks like a very decent golf course this. Brockett. Should be. Lovely area. Passing on through the ferns. You just start to hear the A1M again now. And it would be about rush hour. Black cap singing in there somewhere. One of the few birds that does at this time of year. There you go. So after Brockett Golf Course, you come out opposite the Wagoners, where I've started a few local walks from here in the past. A1M is just behind it as you can hear. In the appropriately named Brick Wall Close. <laughs> it is a dead end as well. Anyway, judging from the vehicles outside, pickups and 4x4s, very much a locals kind of pub. It's got a bit of an outdoor garden as well, which was full as I speak. Five o'clock on a Friday afternoon, lovely sunny one. What do you expect? Now about to cross over the A1M. Most of the traffic at the moment, as you'd guess, is northbound, coming away from London, rather than the me. Leaving the pleasant Ayat Green behind us.
now in Sherrod's Wood following what used to be an old railway line again same one we saw earlier I think this used to link up the uh, main line that I'm catching later, the LNER with the um, St Pancras line at Luton or St Albans, somewhere like that in fact to get it right I'm in Broxwood at the moment headed towards Sherrod's Park very nice memento this wooden bench and as you can see here good use being made of the old sleepers banking up the earth information panel about Sherrod's Park Wood Wardens 50 years of caring for the wood which you can uh, google if you're so inclined so there you go Sherrod's Wood Park finished so here we are back on track if you excuse the pun lost rails information panel here telling us about the well into Dunstable link that's what it is Dunstable joins up with the St Pancras line so there you have it pretty obviously a railway crossing the parkway Welling Garden station straight on past some shops now might better get a drink or something ok uh, 13 and a half miles I made that five hours 20 later and a very decent walk for Hertfordshire that was instructions what, what there were of them still need to be tidied up a bit as per the other comments made on site so I'm not going to add anything to that because uh, those comments were accurate but that was a good walk for Hertfordshire quite impressed actually a bit energy sapping towards the um, early part of the afternoon but uh, nothing untoward so here we are back at Welling Garden which uh, I must admit from what I've seen of it is a damn sight better than Letchworth so free walk 340 completed got about a quarter of an hour wait now for the train back but uh, no sweat do my usual cool down now as I have to at my age a few stretching exercises till the next time